Hello, Booktube. Well, it's a bleak and barren Sunday. Made all the bleaker and barrener by the fact that the mail this week was so good. Big, fat deliveries every day, day in and day out. And now there's today. For the only things on the road are vacationers and funeral processions. And no books for Steve. So as usual, I thought I would console myself with a tag. Uh, and I was tagged in this one. It's the Wizard of Oz tag. Uh, and I was tagged by Dulce's reading. And that gave me the added benefit of uh, discovering her channel and looking at her stuff. So you should all do that too. I'll leave a link uh, in the description below. Uh, and it's all just uh, Wizard of Oz related questions. I thought we'd get right to it. Uh, the first one is Dorothy, of course. A character who's out of their element. Uh, and they're... Of course, that's a staple of fiction, but there's one I had in mind. Uh, it's from a novel from a few years ago, a science fiction novel uh, by Greg Bear called uh, Hull Zero Three. And <laughs> this character uh, wakes up and enters his narrative uh, in just about the worst <laughs> circumstances you can imagine. And uh, the prose is not not particularly like Greg Bear. It's it's good. <laughs> it's actually very stripped down and very propulsive, so I highly recommend it. It's from, uh, I think, two or three years ago. Uh, question number two. Uh, Toto, <laughs> your favorite sidekick. Uh, I have to say, uh, I'm glad that the concept of the sidekick has sort of disappeared. <laughs> that I, it, it is demeaning, and I'm, I'm glad that, it, that a lot of people don't do it anymore. Uh, but if I had to pick one, just off the top of my head for now, it would be uh, not it, the not Etta Candy from the Wonder Woman no, uh, comic books of the 1940s. She was a, a fat, cheery, dim-witted uh, sidekick to Wonder Woman in the 1940s, and writers have been having a field day doing all sorts of stuff with her ever since. Uh, but it looks to me, in the movie, in the upcoming movie from the from the trailer that I've seen, it looks to me like they're going to do uh, some very good, faithful work with Etta Candy. They're going to keep her in the, in the role of a sidekick, but they're going to make her uh, more fleshed out, more intelligent, which is great. I, I have high hopes for it. I uh, don't have high hopes for much in that movie, but I have high hopes for that. Uh, uh, question number three, Over the Rainbow, uh, a book with a beautiful cover. I, I, it's, it's one I've shown you here before. Uh, but it, it comes to my mind because I think it's going to win the the category for 2016. Uh, so I'll happily show it again. It's it's the Essex Serpent. It isn't that gorgeous. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, the book is also really good. It's not just the cover, which is great. Uh, uh, question number four, Yellow Brick Road, a book that took you on a journey. Uh, someday I'm going to have to do a whole video on this because I am a big fan of uh, travel writing. I love it, uh, and have done it myself, although not as much as friends of mine have urged me to do. <laughs> I've been urged many times to write an account of my travels. Uh, but the one that comes to mind, I think a lot of people who like, you know, journey-oriented books will, will agree, is, uh, is this one, Black Lamb and Prairie Falcon by Rebecca West. Uh, her, her just... Truly, I mean, the word is often tossed around, but in this case, it's it's absolutely true. Her panoramic account of uh, Europe, it's just it's an amazing book. It's huge. <laughs> it's gigantic, but uh, it's one of those gigantic books that uh, that you'll be very glad is that big. You'll you'll love it. You'll sink yourself into it. Uh, so I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, question number five, Red Ruby Slippers, the iconic book item. I wasn't really sure what to do with an iconic book item, but I have these. I've mentioned them before. Bookmarks with tassels. <laughs> I love them. I don't ever buy them. I just collect what I find at the Brattle. Uh, but I wish I had one for every book in my collection. I love them. I think they're great. Uh, question number six, uh, Scarecrow, uh, a book that made you think naturally. I had... Uh, Steve reservations about this question because all books make me think. I, I, uh, I don't really get it. I don't really, I don't really get the question. So I'm going to pass on it. Uh, a book that made you think as opposed to what? Uh, uh, anyway, uh, we'll go on. We'll we'll go to question number seven. Tin Man, 
uh, a book that gave you all the feels. Uh, I hate the phrase, but I love the sensation. So I thought I would pick uh, not only a common answer, but a common answer on BookTube, uh, which is this, Anthony Doerr's book, All the Light We Cannot See. Uh, I absolutely loved it, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. It's unabashedly sentimental, um, but I think he makes it work. I think it, it deserves every bit of the praise that it's received, both here and elsewhere. Uh, uh, let's see here. Question number eight. Uh, Cowardly Lion, a character who seemed tough, but deep down is sweet. Well, of course, I have the quintessential uh, booktube answer to that. Adrian Ford <laughs> from Strip Cover Lit. <laughs> uh, question number nine. Lions, Tigers, and Bears, Oh My, a spooky book. Uh, books don't frighten me. I've never had that happen. That's a, it's also true that horror movies don't frighten me. I just sit there saying, while the audience is going nuts, I sit there saying, it's, it's just a movie. You do know that, right? I mean, we paid to see it. <laughs> uh, but creepy books, are where, where that's well done, it's very rare. Usually it's the most leaden, heavy-handed kind of writing. And so the author is so busy telegraphing what they're going to do that you can't possibly be creeped out. But there have been exceptions. Uh, there was an old 30-year-old uh, vampire novel called The Light at the End by Skip and Spectre that was, it's just terrific. I don't think it's in print. I think it's long since gone, but boy, was it good. Uh, and uh, for a short story, <laughs> you absolutely can't go wrong with Sand Kings by George R. R. Martin, the author of... Uh, Game of Thrones. It, it's it's thirty pages that will you will not blink and you will jump at the next sound <laughs> in your house. <laughs> uh, I don't know where it is. I remember years ago there was a big fat collection, maybe even two volumes of the short stories of George R. R. Martin. Well worth getting uh, if you can find it. You won't be able to find it because Martin fans don't give up their treasures. But uh, if you can. He re was really good at short stories. You'd think the opposite would be true for a guy who's now become synonymous with bloated overwriting. But when he had a, a market and had, you know, $50 to earn <laughs> and a page limit that he had to adhere to, he can be very, very good. Uh, so all of his short stories are well worth reading. But I think Sand Kings might be his best one. I don't know. One of the tough, tough competition. Uh, question number 10, The Emerald City, uh, your favorite book setting. Now, this is a book that I've shown here before. I can't resist showing it again, although favorite has to happen with a little bit of irony here because the setting isn't particularly romantic. It's uh, it's Broken Irish uh, by Ed Delaney, and the setting is South Boston, uh, which is a, a uh, was, when he was writing about it, a gritty, clannish, working-class Irish suburb of Boston, uh, uh, back at the, time, at the time that he was writing. It has been rampantly gentrified since then, so you're more likely to find uh, a kale-chomping yuppie than you are to find someone who would stomp his head on the curb. <laughs> so the, the demographic has shifted away from bootless violence. Uh, question number 11. Poppy Field, uh, a book that puts you to sleep. Booktube, I have two words for you. Alice Monroe. <laughs> Uh, question number 12, Wicked Witch and Flying Monkeys, uh, your favorite villain. I have a picture of him. <laughs> uh, it's kind of rare for the kind of books that I like, uh, but it's the only goes to show he's, I, he's not just my favorite villain. Lots of people like him. It's the main character from Agil Saga, Agil Scalargrim's son, <laughs> uh, who's in the, in the saga. He's, we're repeatedly told that he is both violent and ugly we're constantly told that he's ugly <laughs> there's more diplomatic words are often used but it's clear that that most of the reason why he's a bad guy is because he's not pretty <laughs> needless to say steve can sympathize <laughs> uh question number 13 glinda the good witch a good character uh i'm pleased to say that that in adult literature authors tend to shy away from purely good characters. I think they're kind of dull to read, and yet one of my favorite characters is uh, is purely good, and that is Tom Jones from the novel by Henry Fielding. Uh, I 
Don't hear it mentioned often on BookTube, but it's a masterpiece, an absolute masterpiece. And it will also, it's also deeply, richly, repayingly funny. Uh, and the, the character in the middle, Tom Jones, is... <laughs> he's, uh, he's not a country booby squire, <laughs> like, like a lot of the people in his background. And he's not a plaster cast saint, like the man who raises him. He, but he is still good. He is still a good person. Uh, I love that. I love uh, how Fielding walks the dividing line there. Uh, number 14, uh, The Wizard of Oz, a book that seemed impressive but ended up being a letdown. Now, uh, we, should, we should stress that this is referring to the character of The Wizard of Oz, not to the books. The, the Frank Baum books are not a letdown. Uh, but uh, well, the first thing that came to my mind for this was Remembrance of Things Past by Proust, <laughs> uh, which I think is now going under the, the name of uh, Records of Lost Time or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. As an old friend of mine used to say, you can't polish a turd. Uh, I, I read it through and in English. I've never read it in French. And uh, it's a nightmare of solipsism. I've never understood the, the saint's cult that has risen up around it I, it is mind-numbingly boring <laughs> uh, and and also thinks it's far more interesting and complex than it is it shares that in common with another postmodern nightmare novel that i could mention <laughs> and, uh, i'm sure that some of you are aware of my thoughts on james joyce but <laughs> anyway it would be remembrance of things past for this one uh Question number 15, The Man Behind the Curtain, a book with a great twist. I'm going to go back here to Tom Jones, because the first time you read Tom Jones, you will get four-fifths of the way through, and you will be certain that good as he is, sweet as he is, our hero has done something unthinkable, something biblically horrible, something you cannot redeem. And you are absolutely sure that there's no way that couldn't be true. <laughs> Fielding orchestrates it perfectly so that you are certain that Tom, who you've come to love, did this horrible thing. <laughs> and then the book gives you uh, 40 pages of twists and turns that are all masterfully done. <laughs> uh, and question number 16, the last question, there's no place like home, a book that feels like home. Now, if some of you have been watching this channel for a while, you will anticipate this answer but i have to give it uh it's it's the odes of horace this is the beautiful penguin classic edition that isn't made anymore um uh the i there are, there are 17 books that fit this description with me but this one is the foremost of them i go to it when i want to feel at home uh and uh that'll be different of course for every reader but i highly recommend horace anyway uh, and all that's left is to tag people, and I tag uh, Miranda Hayes, I tag Jack the Bibliophile, I tag Britta, uh, her, her channel, which doesn't still still doesn't have 5,000 subscribers, so you all need to get on that. Uh, and I tag uh, Adam from Momentum Mori. <laughs> uh, and I won't reveal which Wizard of Oz character I think of for each one of those. <laughs> I'll leave that to your fervent imagination, booktube. <laughs> and I'll, I'll see you soon. Thank you.